Um, welcome back, everybody. If you joined us for our earlier session, we're happy to see you again. Um, this afternoon, we are happy to welcome two speakers from the Better Business Bureau and the Massachusetts Office of Consumer Affairs, Amy Schramm and Robin Putnam. Um, Amy and Robin will talk about a deceptive scam called skimming. Um, the presentations today have been part of a larger nationwide conversation during Choose Privacy Week. Um, Amy Schramm has been with Better Business Bureau since 2011 and is responsible for educating the public at large and fostering the business to consumer relationship. And Robin Putnam currently works for the Massachusetts Office of Consumer Affairs and Business Regulation, serving as its research and special projects manager. So please join me in welcoming Amy and Robin today. Um, I'll just um, introduce myself briefly because um, most of you, um, all but one, <laughs> were at our program um, earlier today. Um, and just um, reiterate that I'm here on behalf of the Better Business Bureau, happy to be partnering with Robin in the Office of Consumer Affairs. And um, is this, does that work? Um, and, and just let you know that you can utilize the Better Business Bureau as a free precautionary resource tool before you make purchasing decisions or choose a business to sign a contract with, whatever it might be. We have a database of over 5 million businesses that we encourage people to utilize before making those decisions. And we will take calls after you've had a problem with a product or a service or a business, as most individuals know to utilize the Better Business Bureau for, but we'd much rather have you contact us beforehand because you're less likely to have an issue with an unethical business if you take a little bit of time to do a little bit of uh, research on the front end of things. All BBB programs and services are free to the public, whether it's a question you have about a business, a charity organization, a scam, anything that, that Rob and I are about to jump right into, please don't hesitate to reach out. The handout has our website, our email address, and a phone number, and you can also download a free Better Business Bureau app. Um, so you have even more easy, quick access to our database of, of businesses and charities. Thank you. Yes, um, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Robin Putnam and I work for the Office of Consumer Affairs and Business Regulation. We are a state agency located in downtown Boston under the Baker Polito administration, uh, Secretary Ash and uh, under Secretary John Chapman. Um, so our office has five divisions underneath our umbrella. We have the Division of Banks, Division of Insurance, Professional Licensure, Standards, and Telecommunications and Cable. Um, we regulate quite a bit um, in the state of Massachusetts. And um, part of my job is to get out into the communities to let people know what's available to them for the, from the state. One of the things that we have um, is a consumer hotline. I do have a brochure and I'll hand it out at the end. Um, but we have a consumer hotline that's run Monday through Friday from 9 to 4.30 and you will get a human being who will answer the phone, mm -hmm. uh, which is wonderful because I think most people, when you call a company or a business, a lot of times it's just dial one, dial seven, dial six, and you never get a human being or it takes 20 minutes to get a human being. Um, our consumer specialists, they field between two and 300 calls every single week. Um, and they are very, very busy. Some of the, some of the um, topics that they cover or have questions about, um, it's about the lemon laws, uh, landlord or tenant issues, consumer protection laws, chapter 93A, uh, the home improvement contractor uh, program, the small, small claims courts, and as well as shopping rights. So they handle a lot and it's just, it's amazing how many calls they get. So feel free to please call us if you ever have a question, a comment, a concern. It might be something that the, the Division of Banks needs to handle. We can get you there. Um, and we can get your answers questioned, uh, questions answered for you. <laughs> um, but two of our larger programs that we run through our office is the Home Improvement Contractor Program. Um, there's a registration, a complaint and hearing process, an arbitration program, and a guarantee fund. Uh, we also run the state lemon laws. Um, if you buy or lease a new, new or used car in Massachusetts through a dealership um, there are, and it turns out to be a lemon, there are laws to keep you very safe. Um, we're actually in the middle of doing a lemon law audit. I was just running around Cape Cod this afternoon. Um, 
If you're gonna go to a dealership, every car on that lot has to have a bright yellow sticker that tells you what your rights are as a consumer in Massachusetts. So every year we go out and we go throughout the Commonwealth and check out which dealerships are compliance and which are not. Um, just another way to keep you, everybody safer in the, uh, in the state. Um, but before we kind of get going, does anybody have any questions for us? Yes. Like Weights and measures, yes. So if you're going to go to, let's say you're going to buy a pound of, uh, a one pound lobster, I didn't realize this, but when the lobster is taken out of the tank and put onto the scale, the little dish it sits in has to have holes so the water drains out because you're not buying water. Um, you are buying the actual lobster. So we've had complaints and our stand men and women have gone out from standards and checked different um, seafood places to make sure that they were compliant. Um, but gas stations, so you'll see, a lot of times you'll see them right on the gas pump that they've been inspected. Um, so if you ever, so if something doesn't look right, you can call them and say, you know, it doesn't look, I don't think this has been inspected, or what's going on with this one machine? They can send somebody out to inspect those um, gas pumps for you. Um, so we're gonna talk about skimming devices. Skimming devices, unfortunately, have been found everywhere. Um, anywhere you're gonna use a credit card or a debit card. And basically all it is is a small device that is just meant to capture your uh, 16 digit number on the front of your card and a lot of times your, your pin when you put that into the keypad. Um, it's a lot of times they're not very high tech. They um, are very small. You'll never notice them, but I'm gonna I will show you different pictures just kind of things to look out for. Um, and basically what the device is doing is when it steals your information this thief will then most likely sell your information to somebody else. So if you ever, when you go through all of your accounts every month, and it's kind of a boring read, but when you go through line by line, make sure that all of your purchases, you recognize that Amy and I talk about that all the time, because you'd never know if someone who has actually picked up your device, I'm uh, sorry, a device has picked up your credit card information, but if you notice one small charge that you know you've, doesn't make sense, um, let's just say you always go to CVS, and what's that Brooks Pharmacy? What's that $2 charge? That should be a little bit of a red flag for you to go, hmm, maybe I should, something's up, that doesn't look right. And I'm not knocking either CVS or Brooks Pharmacy, it's just an example. Any, co any company that we mention is just purely an example, I'm not knocking anybody. Um, but they, these devices have been found um, at hotels, at ATMs, uh, inside the bank, at the brand, talking to the branch manager right there. Um, coffee shops, restaurants, gas stations, you name it. Um, it's unfortunate and it does happen and our st the division of standards are the men and women who do go out and inspect and they look for these quite a bit. Uh, I think it was a couple months ago they actually found 16 of them in the Chicopee area. So they, they do go out. If you ever think that you've seen something in a gas pump and it doesn't look right, you should call us. Um, and we can have it come and inspect it. If it's on a Saturday afternoon, you can call your local police department, the non-emergency number. Um, they, can, they can come out and inspect it as well. But it's good to, if you see something, do say something about it. Because you just don't want somebody else's information to get stolen. So the types of, the types of skimming devices that are out there, most of them are internal. They are inside of a gas pump. Sometimes they're in the actual um, mouth where you put your card. Um, as some of them are actually Bluetooth enabled. So once the thief gets into the gas pump, which can only take maybe about a minute to get in and out, um, he never, he or she never has to come back because of the Bluetooth enable. They can sort of do a walk by and push a button and get all of the information off of the card and keep going. Um, there are also keypad overlays that have been detected and a lot of times there are also small pinhole cameras because the camera is trying to catch you putting in your pin when you're using the uh, pin pad. So I always suggest to people when you're using your pin or putting your pin in anywhere, you should always cover your hand. Um, it's, uh, I, might, I think sometimes I sound a little paranoid but it's just you read about them so often so it's just little things that you can do to keep yourself safer. Unfortunately there are there are apps that have been we found out online that you can download 
and you put it on your phone, and if I come in after you, um, you've been at the ATM, I can push a button on my phone from the app, and it will send infrared, and, will, and it will detect what numbers you have pressed because of the heat from your fingers onto the actual pin pad. So, I know it sounds creepy and weird. <laughs> when you're done with your transaction, no matter where you are, touch all the numbers. I know it sounds a little weird, but now you're putting your heat from your fingers on every single number. So that way, if someone comes in behind you, they can't get your information. They'll get, they're gonna get all the numbers. Um, and I know it does sound a little creepy, but there are so, this, our technology is amazing and it's always ever changing. So little things you can do will keep you a little bit safer. So these are just two examples of internal skimming devices. I usually only just do two because um, unless you work for a gas station or you um, work for the Division of Standards, you should really never be inside of a gas pump. I'm pretty sure it's probably illegal. Um, so the picture on the left, this is the actual skimming device. It's held on with just electrician's tape. And this one was held on by duct tape right there. They're, they're pretty small. Um, this is the device right here. It's yeah, but that's. Is that a thing? So inside. no, it's inside of the machine. So once you put your credit card information, that is picking up your information. Sorry. So that is picking up your information and recording it. For example, just like this as, as well. It's connected to the internal wiring. Mm -hmm. Sure. So a lot of times, when you're going to be using a gas pump, try to use the gas station pumps that are closest to the, in, the, the kiosk where there's really great lighting. Um, if you're going to go after dark uh, or after hours and there's no one on duty, do use that, those, those ones that are very well lit because the ones that, the gas pumps that are on the fringe that may not have the greatest lighting, um, if it doesn't have great lighting, it's not going to be able to, the security camera is not going to get a really good picture of whoever the thief is. Um, so try to use the ones that are really well lit or just go during the day. A lot of gas stations are, they, they're monitoring, they, they don't want to deal with fraud either. Um, it can take a professional thief under a minute to get in and out of a gas pump. Um, if you want some, see interesting pictures and videos, all you have to do is go to YouTube or just Google credit card skimming devices and you will find pictures and videos from all over the world. Um, and it's truly amazing. I did watch one and this thief was in and out in just barely a minute. So they move fast. They, they're not slow moving at all. Um, exterior mounted. So the picture on the left, this is the actual regular card reader. And this one was just added. That is actually the skimming the device that's picking up your information. Um, so when you are putting your card anywhere, you should really take a look at where you're putting the card. Does it all look the same? If you're at a bank of ATMs, make sure all of the ATMs match. It sounds a little strange, but if you're at two ATMs and yours on the right has that, that should be a little bit of a warning sign. Like, why, why is mine different? Um, I always suggest to people, if it, you have that extra bump out, touch it. Does it move? If it moves, these machines are not built to have any moving parts besides the door going up and your card going in. If you have an extra piece like this and it's moving, that should be a little bit of a red flag. Call your local police department, have them come and inspect it. Um, most, li most likely it probably is a skimming device. I always tell people to look at colors, uh, movable pieces if they don't match. For example, this picture on the left, this is the regular card reader and this was slipped right over it. This is kind of a side view of it. So if you get to a, uh, an ATM and yours is completely different, you might not want to use that ATM. And then this is a skimming device right here that was just slight, put right over the regular card reader at the gas station pump. Uh, they also can be very tiny. So the ones that have been found um, at restaurants, a lot of times that someone will, a nefarious group will pay a disgruntled employee who's not making a lot of money or good, good tips. So they'll say, hey, we'll give you this little skimming device. Every time you check somebody out, swipe it once for us and we'll give you $50 a swipe. So, and when I say that, this is, this is how small they can, can be. They can fit right inside of uh, your palm. 
they were this actually did happen at a restaurant so I know that sounds a little weird but I never ever leave my let my credit card go out of my sight I'd never give it to a um, uh, my um, the girl Ooh. I never never leave, leave let it go out of my sight so I will go up and actually just check out myself um, I just I don't trust waiters or waitresses I know that Maybe that sounds odd, but these, these have been found at restaurants, so it does make me nervous. Um, the picture on the right, this is, this is another type. It was found at a, at a red box. It was placed right over the regular card reader, so you basically are doing a double swipe. This has also been found at uh, ATMs where they have the glass box, like the kiosk. So there's a, there might be a little sign that says, if you'd like to refresh your magnetic stripe, swipe it here. So if your stripe is not working, my guess is you should probably just go and, and talk to the get talk to your bank and get a new card. Um, they're not going to have something outside of the bank after hours to refresh your magnetic stripe. It's silly, but it does happen. Um, and it's just also important to know that those after hour kiosks are not always the safest place to go. Um, I did a little test run. I have a regular library card that has a magnetic stripe just to go you know, pick out books. That card got me into, after hours, the kiosks at five different banks on the South Shore. Just not getting into the bank after hours, but just the kiosk, just swiping to get in. So it's not exactly the safest place to go after hours. It's a little bit safer to go, um, as opposed to using the ATMs that are simply right on the wall, just hanging out. Um, because a thief actually has to go into the kiosk and, and do the, the, the job. But just be aware that some banks are not always as secure. Um, I did not make some friends with some bran man the branch managers, but I said, look, you know, I'm just saying it's not really that safe. You might want to change things up. Um, but, you know, I'm just one person, but I just I always try to let people know, be, be careful when you're going to go get money out. Try to go during between nine and five or six or seven um, because you just never know what you might have to what you might encounter. Um, when I mention colors, um, I'll use Bank of America just as an example. Red, white, and blue. Bank of America, that's their trademark colors. If you get to a Bank of America, or whatever your bank is, and there's this powder blue slot, or yellow, that should be a huge red slat, flat flag for you because you have to realize these are major corporations that have spent millions of dollars on their marketing and their branding. They're not going to randomly have colors that don't match anything that they've just been working on. So if you go to a Bank of America and all of you have these two slots, slots you might want to talk to the, the branch manager or call the local police department. Um, and the picture on the left, so this is bright silver. This is the actual skimming device right there. Um, the rest of the machine is sort of a, a light gray and a dark gray. Nothing on the machine was silver. So it stood out to the person who found it. It was also a little wobbly when they tried to use it. So the picture on the left, this is the skimming device right here. It's plastic, it's light gray, and it doesn't match the rest of the machine, which is also metal. If you also notice, it slants to the left, so it was not put on straight. So my theory is an engineer who makes these machines are not going to have parts that are slanted. They're going to be well made and durable. Um, no plastic parts that are going to fall off and look like this. If you'll notice right here, a little hard to tell, but it's a little pinhole camera. So this is trying to get your credit card information, and this is getting your pin. The picture on the right, this kind of sticks out a little bit more because this is gray. This is the actual skimming device that was placed over the card reader. And the rest of the machine is actually taupey colored, sort of a taupey tan color. So it didn't match the machine at all. Uh, keypad overlays. So the picture on the left, first of all, it's metal and it was all gouged um, uh, apart. So that should be a little bit of a red flag. Why are there gouge marks on this pin pad? That doesn't make sense. Did someone try to pry it off of another machine? It was. If you also notice, it slants to the right. So this is catching your pin, and this is slanting to the left. This is getting your credit card information. And there's glue residue right there. So if you look at these machines and you see duct, duct tape coming down or double-sided tape, electrician's tape, glue residue dribbling down. 
that should be a little bit of a red flag going, that doesn't make sense. Why is that there? That doesn't make sense at all. Um, the picture on the right, this is, this is the overlay. It's dark gray and this is silver. So this was found because someone was at the gas pump and said, whoa, why is my pin pad a little bit different than all the other ones? And this one, unfortunately, it's, it's completely falling apart. That's incredibly obvious. So if you get something that's falling apart, even if it's not a device, it should be taken out of service. And what I mentioned, hidden cameras. When you are at a gas pump, when you are putting your card anywhere, look around and see what's around you. Most ATMs, they do have mirrors that are kind of sunken in the machine so that you can look up and see if there's any strange person kind of hovering behind you, um, which is pretty normal, just makes you feel a little bit safer. But if you have a car mirror like this or that, that's just randomly placed on top, you might want to really kind of look at it. So this, there's a pinhole right here facing down waiting for someone to put their pin in. And this one, this actually is a car mirror that was purchased at just a regular auto shop. And it had a, a um, digital, a little camera in it. This was hidden by a brochure box right here. So now everybody's gonna be a little paranoid and really check things out. I highly suggest that you might look a little odd, but you just never know. They're found everywhere. Um, so you just never know where they might pop up. Uh, a lot of our gas stations, they are getting tamper evidence tape and they're putting their logos on it, which is wonderful. Um, just do look at it. If, it's, if it looks like it's been sliced open or it says void on it, you might not want to use that machine and have that and let us know and we can have someone come and inspect the machine. And just these are just some examples. This actually is a security tape. It's already been sliced open. I don't know if there's something in this machine, but that would make me nervous. This one, this is the gas station, um, they completely wrapped the whole thing so no one can put anything over it. Um, it is important to know that there are skimming devices called shimmers. They look like a little teeny thin credit card and they go into the, the mouth of the opening and they, they are left there. And then you put your credit card in and pull it out and you think it's a regular transaction, but this shimmer is catching your information. Um, so I highly suggest kind of take a look at it. It is make, making things a little bit more challenging for the uh, Division of Standards because they have to now have flashlights, uh, tweezers to actually look into these machines to make sure nothing's in the throat. And some more examples. So 7-Eleven, they put their own logo on it, which is great. So this is an untampered with security tape. See, it's all just red. This one, it says void. It's voided out completely. It just says void and white. It's not sliced open, but I would highly suggest not using that machine and have someone have the machine looked at because it's just, you don't know if someone has touched them. Um, there are a couple different gas station companies, gas, gas pump companies. I had to go to a lecture on gas pumps. It's kind of interesting. Um, very, very expensive new technology for these gas pumps. Um, they are so, so touchy-feely that if you just move the machine a little or try to move the machine, it will shut the whole machine down. So they are coming up with really great technology. It's going to be pretty expensive, but it will, start, uh, it will allow us to be safer as consumers. So these are just some of the tips that I always suggest to people. Um, compare the, cr the, the readers. Where, compare, compare notes. If you're at a bank of ATMs, make sure they all look alike. Make sure the colors are correct. If, you, if your bank colors are green and white, make sure there's no powder blue card slot. That doesn't make sense. Why would they have that? Doesn't make sense at all. Um, look around for hidden cameras. Look around for um, glue residue, tape, anything that just looks out of the ordinary. If your card reader has a, a bump out, like the first picture, touch it. Does it move? Does, is there anything a little sketchy about it? If there's something, odd, don't use the machine. It's just going to keep you a lot safer. Um, use, use the well-lit gas pumps if you're going to go get gas after dark. Uh, we are in the, almost in summer now, so it's going to stay light for quite a while, but if you're getting gas and it is dark, just make sure you're using the well-lit gas pumps. It will keep you safer. Cover your hands when you're typing in your, your pin. That goes for the grocery store, too. Um, 
You just never know. There's so many people out there that are kind of creepy, and you don't know if they're trying to tell, take a selfie and be silly in line, but what you're not realizing is they're taking a selfie like this to get your PIN or credit card information. So it sounds weird, but there are people out there who do that. Look at, so see who is in your, your space, just to kind of make sure that there's no one standing directly behind you trying to get your information. Um, and then most people ask, they do ask, use it, should they use their chip or should they use their swipe more often? Use your chip. Use the chip, it's much safer, it's better technology, it's newer technology. Um, try not to use the swipe as often as you possibly can. And then I do end it with, if you have this symbol right here, um, sometimes it's on the other side of the credit card, that means you have that credit card or debit card has near field technology. Yep, so if you have that technology, make sure your credit card is in a protective sleeve. Um, your passport has the same technology. If you have renewed it since 2013, um, you can buy little sleeves online for five or six dollars. They're very inexpensive, but it's just, it's, it's technology that's super fast and everybody loves it because it takes two seconds to use it and everybody complains about the chip because it takes a minute and, I don't know, 10 seconds and everybody's always in a rush, but it is, it is better technology. Yes? So if somebody told me that if you take a woman's foil mm -hmm. and put it in your wallet so that the credit card, yes. the credit card, you're taking a minute for this? Yes, so you can use aluminum foil. Me personally, that would drive me completely insane <laughs> to have aluminum foil constantly getting all crinkly. That would drive me completely insane. Um, I have a few so I can hand some out. Um, they're $2. You can go to Bed Bath & Beyond, AAA, Amazon sells them, $2, $3. They're super cheap. Um, the, the passport holders are, I think, 5 or $7, very inexpensive. Um, what's interesting about the passport, the newer passport, it was designed so that when it's physically closed, it does act as a blocker. But um, I just got a brand new passport, and when I lay it or just put it on my table, it doesn't stay closed. It always kind of sits open a little bit like that. Um, and I also say, if you've ever gone through customs, you're tired, you're cranky, you're running for another flight, you're trying to find your where's your kids, and we just throw our passport into a bag and it can be left open. If someone goes into the terminal and gets through the you know security, because um, let's just say let's say they get a $400 round trip ticket from Boston to Reykjavik, that's all. They don't have to even get on the flight but they can walk around the international terminal trying to get information. So make sure that when you're using your passport, really close it. Um, it's just one of those little things, just another way to keep yourself safer. Are there any other questions? Can we answer for them? Yes. I, I don't have a problem with Apple Pay or Google Wallet. I mean, obviously I can't, you know, brand any other, say anything about them, but, um, in my experience, they have been very much safer. I think it's important in, uh, when using anything like an mm -hmm. Apple Pay, a PayPal, a, Ve a Venmo, whatever it might be, to just continue to monitor because you just can't be positive, you know? Yeah. They could be reputable now and, and continue to be reputable but not have any breaches and then you just never know. These hackers, these these scammers are smart. So just continue to monitor like anything else and, mm -hmm. and, and then you'll be fine. Because you'll catch it if something does happen. So it's not the same technology. Oh, it is. It's the same technology as this. The near, the near field. Yes. Mm -hmm. I just would be close the app when you're not using it. Yes. You stuff like that. Don't leave your Bluetooth on. I've just was reading about Bluetooth. Don't leave your Bluetooth on all the time because you just never know. Mm -hmm. Sure. Are there other questions that we can answer for anybody? Have we completely? Made you paranoid? Uh -huh. Ho hopefully not. I don't know. I'm never getting Well, I live in a small town. It's kind of funny. I, all the police would like, oh, she's checking them out again. Because <laughs> I do. I, I'm that weird person. I, when I go to get gas or use the ATM, I'm up touching things. Does it move? Does it match? And I'm sure if there's someone new on the force, they'd be like, oh my gosh, what is she doing? What's going on? Should we question her? But I'm just checking things out. I don't want to make sure. I don't want my credit card stolen. It's ugh, who wants to deal with fraud? I know 
it's better off to be cautious. My dad goes yeah. to the bank like three times a day. He'll go to the bank and then he'll go to the hardware store and he'll go to the bank and he'll cut gas and he'll go to the bank. You know, he'll like think he's taking out enough, but then, so he just prefers to work with cash, you know, it works easier for him. But he's also prone to losing things, so that makes me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you all so yes, much. Yes, thank you so much for being here. For being here. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Did anyone not get a handout? Did you get a handout?